What are five ways that your church should be using AI right now? We spend so much time in ministry on menial tasks that at this point could honestly be given away to a computer. Or maybe at this point, you're so swamped leading a team of volunteers or leading worship or trying to manage your day to day that you can't possibly put more on your plate. Well, in this video, we're gonna show you a few ways that you can maximize your time and maximize your impact for the kingdom for your church. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. So the first tool that I'm gonna go through with you today is one for social media. If you already record or stream your video services, this is a way that you could very quickly create social media content to maximize your impact. So I'm going to show you how my workflow would go with this. My church actually just streams to YouTube and I actually preached at my church just a couple weeks ago and I wanted to use this as an example. And so I pulled up the recording on YouTube and all I did was I copied that link. Now you can actually try out this service for free. So you can sign up for a free account and see how it does. And then if you like it, you can continue and use their products. So as you can see, we actually use this at Churchfront, but all I would have to do is paste my YouTube link in here and I can click on this get clips in one click link. And it's going to give me some options for shorts for Instagram and YouTube and TikTok. The other thing that's great here is if I don't want to use up all my credits, I don't have to try and use the whole video. I could figure out where the video starts here, where the sermon actually starts. If I don't want to use any music for shorts and I can actually minimize the amount of time that it's going to actually process before clicking that button. Once that was there, all I would have to do is click this and it's going to create a bunch of shorts based on that YouTube video. If you don't stream from YouTube, you can very quickly go in here and upload your own video file and you don't have to do that. So if you just record to a camera, you record internally to a computer, you can also do it that way. Once that video has been evaluated by Opus Pro, you can go in and actually select from a bunch of options that they give you. But the great thing is you don't have to settle for what they give you either. You can actually edit them yourself if you want to make them a little bit better. I'm going to show you how some of these start off so you can and get an idea of what the AI decided was important from my sermon. Not by our works, but by your grace. Father God, thank you for this family. And thank you for the reminder that, that you made our justification possible, not by what we have done. That our only real response, the only thing we can really do to start on this journey is to say, God, so what is your response to finding out you're a wretched sinner in desperate need of the justification that God gives you? What does your obedience actually look like? Do you do what you're supposed to do because you're afraid of the punishment that God has for you if you don't do it? Or are you trying desperately to prove yourself to God or other people? So as you can see, those are pretty good. I could honestly probably just post those and be relatively happy with them, but I'm picky and some of you probably are too. So I wanted to show you, you can actually go in here and edit these as well. So if I wasn't perfectly happy with this, but I knew that it was close, I could very quickly come in here and you'll see there's some empty space at the beginning. I could get rid of that by just dragging that over. If there was a section in here that I really didn't like, I could come over here and put the timeline wherever I wanted it. I could split the clip. I could move it over. I could split the clip again and I could delete that section. So you can really quickly go through and edit all of these videos to the way that you exactly want them. And it also edits all of the captions at the same time. So it puts captions on it and does all of it for you. So this is a really cool option for anyone that doesn't have a video editor on staff, or honestly, even if you do, this would speed up their workflow. And rather than doing one or two or maybe three reels a week, you can do seven reels a week. You could do a reel every single day with very minimal work from someone who wants to go through and schedule these things. And speaking of scheduling, I think this is one of my favorite parts of this software is that once you have your clips, you can go in and you can schedule them out ahead of time. So you don't have to go in and try and post everything in one day. You can literally just go in here and click on one of these. I could choose one of those clips here. I could very quickly just go through and make sure that the caption looks like I want it to look. I could select it. I could change the caption. I could change the title. And then I 
can schedule it to go out live exactly when I want it to. So this is not just an AI creation tool for content. This is actually also a great scheduling tool for churches that don't have a ton of time to be spending on their social media accounts all day long. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you for how you could be using AI is actually it bleeds over into some of the other ways, but this is a great first step to get your content from your video or from your live stream onto a page somewhere so that you could do something with it. But it's a service that we use at Churchfront called Rev.com. All I did was paste the link from my YouTube video into this and you can order human transcripts, which costs a lot more money, or you can order AI transcripts. And all you have to do is paste a URL in here so I could do the same thing where I grab the URL from this video. I could paste it into this system. I can add it. And once it's added, I could click I'm finished and it would cost me $16 to transcribe this entire video. Now, this is one of those things you got to think, is it worth it to spend 16 bucks a week? Personally, in my opinion, with the few things that I'm going to show you that you could do with this transcript once you have it, I do think this is worth it. If you wanted to have someone transcribe your sermon, it's going to cost you a whole lot more in labor than $16 to transcribe your entire message, your entire Sunday service out into a written document that you can use for other things. But if I were to check out here, it would cost me $16. And since I've already done it, I'll show you here. This is the transcript I got by paying $16. It's got all of our music going here at the beginning, but then it gets to the sermon and it does a really, really good Good job of transcribing your sermon. You can actually see here that it puts a different speaker for every person that it thinks is different speaking on the video. So all I had to do is put my name in where I started speaking so that it knew when I picked up my transcript. Now, again, this is kind of a small one and it costs a decent amount of money, but I'm going to show you several ways that you could use this transcript to do some really cool things for your ministry. Because the next thing that I'm going to show you is going to be a game changer if you you have to try and create things like small group Bible studies or podcast notes, or if you want to try and create YouTube chapter markers for your live stream. This is such a great resource that I don't think you want to sleep on this. You guys have probably all heard of ChatGPT, and for a while at Churchfront, we use ChatGPT for a lot of things, but we found an AI that does a lot better with language models because that's all it does. It's called Claude, C-L-A-U-D-E dot A-I, and all you have to do is paste your transcript into the service and you can have it do a lot of really cool things. So what I did is I just gave it this prompt. Please write the following based on the transcript I'm about to paste. A Bible study with small group engagement questions, podcast notes, and YouTube chapter markers. Only use the section that starts with my name, Matt Walcher, for the podcast notes and Bible study. That way it's not trying to create a Bible study based off of the music at the front of the service. So once I gave it that prompt and I pasted my transcript from my service that I just paid for over at Rev.com, this is what it spit out. Now the first time it messed up the chapter markers, and this is something you'll deal with with AI. Every once in a while it just kind of makes some assumptions and jumps to conclusions and you have to correct it but I had it redo my chapter markers and these are relatively accurate. I can tell by going in here, you can see there's some things that are misspelled. It tries to spell a Greek word that isn't correct. And so there are things that you might have to edit yourself, but it gives me relatively accurate chapter markers that I can copy and paste straight into YouTube. Then the other thing it did, it made podcast notes for me based off of my sermon. And as you can see, the podcast notes are pretty detailed. They're pretty great. They show me the scriptures that I need to study if I'm going along with this. If I wanted to turn this sermon into a podcast, these will work really great to put in the podcast notes section on any podcast website. And then finally, and what I think is maybe the most intriguing of all of these is a small group Bible study. We all have a tough time coming up with small group stuff to study at our churches. This is something you could do with relatively minimal effort to send to your small groups to cover on a weekly basis. And it would allow you to use your sermon as the basis for your small groups, keep your entire church aligned with what you're trying to teach them and keep them on task. So this basically gave you an opening prayer, a key scripture to read through, background content. It gives you some small group questions, some icebreakers. These are things that you could easily go through and send out to your small group leaders in order for them to host a small group on a weekly basis. Now, stopping right here for just a second, because I know some of you are going to be complaining about using AI to create content. I'm not saying you shouldn't go through this stuff with a fine tooth comb. Absolutely. I'm not talking about creating content that is just from a computer that you're going to preach from the stage. Absolutely. Any research, anything you do on ChatGPT or Claude AI, go through it. 
double check it, make sure it's accurate, make sure it's scripturally accurate, theologically accurate. But doing that takes a lot less time than trying to write something like this from scratch. The fourth way that you could be using AI right now for your church is actually by using ChatGPT to create sermon graphic designs for your sermon series. I'm gonna show you a quick one that I did yesterday for an upcoming series at my church that they may or may not use, but I think you get the idea of what you could do with these services. So what I did is I threw ChatGPT a prompt. I said, create a sermon series image, at least 1920 by 1080 in a 16 by nine format. It's for a sermon series called One Hit Wonders. It's just the small books of the Bible, so nothing really thematic. Now again, here's where AI sometimes screws up. It started doing this and just told me that it was getting started for about 10 minutes. Finally, I gave up on it. I said, are you still there? It says, yes, yes, I'm still here, but I'm creating an image for this. I created a sample image. It didn't. The sample image was completely blank, but then it spit out some concepts. And honestly, this is probably where I should have started. I should have said, hey, give me some ideas for sermon series artwork based on this title. If I'd have done that first, I would have started here, but it gave me some ideas, a bookshelf with tiny books, a spotlight on a single page, old vinyl record, Bible imagery, minimalist scrolls or manuscripts, and then a lonely podium. I really liked the idea of the old vinyl record, the one hit wonders, kind of the music play on words that we have there. So what I did is I said, give me one with your record idea from above. And so this is what it spit out. At first glance, this is okay. It looks a little clip art-ish. So I was like, you know what? I, I like the idea, but make it more photorealistic. And this is where it started getting pretty cool. As you can see here, if I zoom in, it's actually a relatively high res image. Now it included a bunch of different books here and I wanted it to do different books. So I wanted it to show Obadiah, Philemon, 2nd and 3rd John and Jude. So it left it exactly the way it was, but it put on almost all of those names. It didn't like trying to fit all of them. So I asked it, I said, you missed Jude. It then put Jude, but it left out third John. So I said, you missed third John, please include all of the following. It still didn't include Jude on there. So I said, seriously, where's Jude? This is where sometimes it gets frustrating to work with AI, but this time it added it in. And now we've got Obadiah, Philemon, second and third John and Jude on the image. These are the books of the Bible that my church will be preaching out of during this sermon series. And it looks really solid. I like it. So I downloaded it again. This is where working with AI, you've got to check stuff. It's not actually 1920 by 1080. It's a slightly different dimension. So I asked him to upscale to 1920 by 1080. It created the exact same image that was wasn't upscaled at all. So when I downloaded it, it wasn't the right size. Uh, so I said, so no, you can't. And it says, so you're right to be frustrated. Thanks for your patience. Yes, I can upscale, but it can't show me that image. So what it had to do is give me a download option for that image. So I downloaded it and this is what it came up with. So at the end of the day, this was the image that it came up with. And I actually think it looks pretty solid. I could use this for sure for a sermon series background. I'd probably blur it out a little bit if I was going to use it as a note slide and just make it a background image. But I could very easily put one hit wonders at the top of this in either Canva or in Photoshop and create a gorgeous sermon series image that looks relatively photorealistic that would look great as my sermon series image. And the fifth and final way that you could be using AI right now to help your ministry is actually something called AI chatbots. Now, again, would I trust AI to do everything right? No, there definitely needs to be some human oversight to make sure that it's not telling people weird things, but this is a great service that you could utilize right now on your website that could help out with a lot of the basic questions that I know churches get on a normal basis. So what I did is I've got an account here with zapier.com. There are lots of other chatbots out there. Some of them are priced better. Some of them are worse, but this is one that I could use. I very quickly loaded into this chatbot my church's website with my current account. It let me load up to 20 web pages. So I loaded, I only really needed 19. I didn't need every single page on my website. For the most part, I needed staff. I needed service times. I needed the about us page. And so I loaded them into this website. And then the other thing that I did, cause I thought it would be neat. What if every time you did one of those rev transcripts, you loaded the message, your sermon into your AI chatbot. So if someone asks a question about what you've been preaching on, your AI chatbot 
would know. So this is a really interesting thought experiment here for me. And if I went in here, here is the chatbot model. And if I were to embed this on my church's website, people could very quickly ask the AI some questions that it could answer without someone having to be there to answer all of their questions. So what's the one thing that everyone asks when they come to your website or when they call? What time are services on Sunday? And it's going to scan through its knowledge base based off of what I fed it, which was my church's website. And sure enough, my church's service times are 9.30 and 11. And I love that youth and kids meet at 9.30 a.m. only. That's an important detail that you might not get if you just scanned the website. Another one that my church gets all the time is that there are a lot of people that just show up at our church for our food ministry, our food pantry. So what time is the food pantry available. And there you go. It came up with the exact hours that our food pantry is available on a weekly basis, but it also included some really important information. It only serves people in our area code and you must have a valid picture ID for any other questions. Feel free to ask. So I thought using the sermon that I posted here, I would ask it some questions as far as what I taught on. So let's ask, what were some of the verses that Matt used in his sermon on justification. And very quickly, it's spitting out the verses that I preached from when I gave my sermon. So every week you could load that sermon transcript into your AI bot so that it could learn about what you preached on. And if someone asked, did Matt say about justification? And I think this is an awesome use case for using something like an AI bot on your website. Someone logs in, they forgot what you preached on, or they just wanted some ideas of what they could study deeper based on your sermon. Let's ask that. So I asked the chat bot, what are some things I could study to deepen my knowledge on justification based on Matt's sermon? And really quickly, it spits out a bunch of things that someone could study to learn more about what I preached on in my sermon. So there you have it, five ways that your church could be using AI right now to increase your reach with the gospel. Let me know in the comments if there's any part of this that you're interested in or if there's anything that you maybe have objections to, I'd love to hear it. Other than that, if this video was helpful, make sure to like it and subscribe to our channel for more stuff like this. And we will see you in the next video.